The different categories are, you have runway categories, you have realness categories. If a guy walks in realness, and I'm not talking about heterosexual community, I'm talking about a gay man, I'm not supposed to be able to clock that you're in the lifestyle. Categories like realness was a way to say, okay, can you go get food for the house? Because we can't get a job. So if, unless someone's real enough to be able to keep a nine to five, we don't have enough food to be able to pay illegally for people to survive to the next ball or survive to make their next dollar or get another job until they fire us because they find out our tea and stuff. So back then in the 80s and 70s, it was a little bit harder in 90s and stuff. And it's just starting to become more liberated in some states. So female figure performance is a more inclusive way of categorizing the category that was made for like the, the girls of the scene. Because back then, you know, it was the masters of femininity was the fem queens, the, the uh, women of trans experience. So when you have now a lot of cis women who's embracing Vogue, the, that art form of Vogue, and it's like we can't just call it fem queen performance and we can't call them just real women performance because then it's like degrading to uh, the women of trans experience because at the end of the day, I, would, I don't like to be called a tranny. I don't like to be called transgendered. When I go to work, I don't call myself a tranny. My, it says female on my ID. I'm sorry. Like, like I, I can tell you about my experience in, this, in life, but I'm not going to go by a tagline. So therefore, um, that that was a way they recategorized the uh, category to be more inclusive, but it still can in, uh, include all the femme figures in the world. So the drag queens, the cis women, and the women of trans experience, that AKA femme queens of the scene. <laughs> The main elements about Vogue is, you know, generally hand performance, spin dip, duck walk, catwalk, and floor performance. If you ain't got those within your creativity and you fill in yourself, I mean, a cute move and a cute finishing exclamation point to those elements is all great, but if you ain't got your elements, it's not gonna be that long of a live of success in ballroom. I don't wanna see a stunt after stunt, but you don't even tell no story. Cause then after a while, you're just doing acrobatics with a dip. I'm sorry, that's not cute. It's like, if that's the case, everybody who does dance can come out here and Vogue. Uh, Voguing is a form of expression. It's what your body tells you to do. You just ride the beat. Don't let the beat ride you. You just go with the flow, whatever your body wants you to do, you do it and you don't deny it, you don't uh, fight it, you just release. It's a form of release. It's my release. It's just, you know, self, like I said, it's to me, voguing is the best form of freestyle that you can have. Like, it just comes from your loins. Like, it was created in a prison cell with people who did tutting and watching Vogue magazines and intertwined a karate and taekwondo and everything that they knew. So it's like to see that evolve. Vogue film came from them trying to Vogue like their favorite film queen. It used to be called uh, Butch Queen Vogue and like your favorite film queen. So Butch Queen Vogue film comes from that, you know? So it's like them paying it forward. It's a, Who's your favorite Vogue, like your favorite film queen is the name of a category now. So it's like, you know, just being able to be that girl that people want to have the essence of when they're voguing. So the category that I'm walking in is Pretty Boy Runners with a Twist. And that is basically divided in two parts, realness and twist. So realness is basically the homosexual male that can basically blend in with the heterosexual community. So in the ballroom lingo, not being able to be clocked 
I walk that and I walk pretty boy wellness, which means basically I'm pretty, I have pretty teeth, I have pretty skin, pretty hair. I'm not saying this, this is just what the community identifies me as and you just go with it. Um, and the twist part is where you actually vogue. So that's the gag factor because you're uh, trying to, or attempting or putting on um, this kind of masculine role. And then when you're coming out for the second part of the category, it's kind of like you're, you're doing the complete opposite. So you're being so much in touch with your feminine side. So that's the difference. You get, you get to play with your masculine side and your feminine side and that's the gag factor because people aren't gonna expect you to do that. I walk two categories, but today I'm walking face. Face is selling face. Effortlessly knowing that everything is to perfection and it is serving face. My first category that I ever walked was face, but I always wanted to walk futuristic or bizarre. A part of the ballroom scene that is a huge scale of vernacular that is used within it that is truly hilarious. I love when they say they use terms like that is fierce honey and not in the good way but in a way that that needs to be fixed up or cunt is my favorite of them all because it means you are over and over too. It means you are slaying. They are synonymous towards each other. It's just fire energy. I love the vernacular that it all brings. So it's really, and then kiki too, which means that is fun. It's a blast, it's a laugh. So yeah, those are my favorite vernaculars from the ballroom scene. I am the icon, Freddy La Beja, the overall father of the royal house of La Beja. You're watching BET Queer as 